for you today on International Women's Day. So thank you so, so much for joining us. And we're just uh, really excited to learn all about mentorship and why it's important for young female executives in the professional world to have a good mentor. So if you are joining us, we'll do a little engagement piece. If you wanna let us know in the chat where you're from and I'll give some shout outs while we count down to 12 o'clock. Oh, Paducah, Kentucky, Angela, thanks for joining us. Oh, Keisha Dean from Atlanta, Union City, Hi Will in Nashville, Gracie and Jackson, Vita in Martin, Tennessee, watching from Kenton today. Thank you, Charlene. Carly's from Union City. Awesome, so if you are just now joining us, we're asking people to let us know where you're watching from in the chat box, because we've got an incredible lineup for you today. Let's see, Ashley King, you're sweet. She's in Union City. Shay from Paris, Tennessee. Chambry watching in Union City. Polly, Union City. We got a great lineup from Union City. Brooke watching from the Obine County Chamber. Awesome. Hi, Sandy from Lexington. Okay, we've got less than a minute before we start. And now we are also on Facebook. So if you have friends, that didn't we're not able to join us um we're not able to register because we so we kind of sold out then tell them to watch us on facebook live today as we do this so thank you all for joining us we're going to start promptly at 12 o'clock because we have a hard stop at one and you guys are in for a treat today so it is 12 o'clock according to my uh clock so let's get started Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this panel discussion on Women Building Up Women, where our guest speakers will share their stories on the importance of young female executives having a more experienced mentor in their profession and how you can go seeking a mentor or becoming a mentor. We are hosting this on International Women's Day, so be sure to give some words of encouragement to all of your female friends, neighbors, and mentors today. We will begin our panel discussion with a mentor-mentee duo, Suzanne Harper and Lynette Wagster, and then we will welcome our keynote speaker, Nakisha Pratt, with HarperCollins Publishers in Nashville. You will definitely want to stick around to hear what she has to say on mentorship. So let's get started and welcome Suzanne Harper and Lynette Wagster. They're going to pop up here on the screen in just a moment. Hi, Lynette. Hi, Suzanne. While they're getting settled, I'm going to give you a little bio on each one of them. Suzanne Harper is the marketing director at Twin Oaks Technology in Martin, Tennessee, and is also the co-owner of Project 731, a clothing company that promotes living in the 731 area code while supporting local philanthropic causes. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and happy International Women's Day. Thank you, you too. And Lynette Wagster is the general manager of the Weekly County Press and has worked in the publishing and news industry for 36 years, specializing in marketing and local news. Welcome, Lynette. Thank you so much. Well, let's dive right in and we'll go, we'll start with you, Lynette. Will you please share with us how you both connected? An employee told me that the sister of a past freelance writer was interested in a full-time job. The freelance was Ron Peckham, Suzanne's brother. He was just super laid back, casual, great personality and dependable. So when Suzanne popped in the office one day, I was happy to talk to her, but I really wasn't expecting the Suzanne that I got. She was just put together, proper. And my first impression was she's a fresh college grad she will want to change the world and just, she's pretty, so let's just move on. But that wasn't Suzanne, that impression lasted maybe two minutes and then we hit it off. I saw what she really was, intelligent, authentic, and pretentious, and she stayed. Wonderful, and how long did y'all work together? Four years. Four, Four years. years. And this mentorship went two ways. I saw really quickly that 
you can learn from the younger generation and they take notes from you and you just blend and form a partnership, Wonderful. which was important. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're talking about today is the mentorship and the friendship as well. So thank you, Lynette. Suzanne, um, will you please share with us why having a mentor is important to you? Absolutely. And I want to say first and foremost, I am so lucky to have Lynette Waxer as my mentor. Um, having a mentor has been more important and valuable to me than I could have ever imagined. It's really one of those things that you don't think about needing until you're out in the real world and you're navigating how to grow in your own career and your own confidence. And having a mentor helped me do just that. So I'll backtrack to about 10 years ago where our story began when I popped into Lynette's office, as she likes to say. <laughs> I was fresh out of college. I had my marketing degree from UT Martin. And um, as some of us do, some of us have a false sense of entitlement about what the world will hold for us after graduation. And sometimes that doesn't work out. So I was really in a place where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my degree. I didn't know what was going to make me happy. I didn't know where I wanted to live. So I really just took a chance on this full-time job in advertising at the Weekly County Press. And I was fortunate that not only did Lynette take a chance on me to hire me full-time, but she also saw something more in me um, to where she invested her time uh, more than just being my boss. Her, her, Yes, my boss. <laughs> so she literally took me under her wing and she brought me with her to community events and meetings and uh, different organizations that she was a part of. And she helped me to meet these local business owners and local government officials and people in her circle that she was connected to. So I don't know if a lot of people would believe me if I told you this now, but I actually used to be so shy. So <laughs> inserting myself into these situations and these conversations was not my style at all. Um, but having Lynette there made me feel like I always had a seat at the table and that was so helpful. So through her guidance and example, she helped me grow in my confidence. She helped me grow in my interest in the community and what was going on around me. And it really helped me recognize the value that I have to offer. And so those tools I now have, thanks to Lynette, and they have carried me through two other full-time jobs since the Weekly County Press. And I also want to point out that as hard as it was for her to let me go, Lynette is the one who encouraged me to spread my wings and leave the nest and go after a, a different job after the Weekly County Press. And she actually drove me physically in her vehicle to go turn in my resume and application because she thought that I could do more. So at the time, she definitely believed in me more than I believed in myself. And I needed that to push me into the next level. So a um, little story I wanna tell on that note, my very last day at the Weekly County Press, I was packing up my things in my little cardboard box. Uh, I was getting ready to leave. It was just Lynette and I left in the office and I was kind of lingering outside her office door to say goodbye. And we looked at each other and it was one of those moments where any normal people would probably start crying or say something sentimental. And Lynette just looked up at me and she said, well, get the heck out. <laughs> because she didn't say heck. And um, so I took my things and I got in my car and I had a good cry by myself uh, because that was four years of my life. And I looked up and I saw Lynette locking up the front door. And when she turned around, I saw that she was crying too. So <laughs> it was just a, a little touching story. And, you know, I can say with 100% confidence that I would not be where I am today without my mentor. And bottom line, that's why it's so important to me. Wonderful. Thank you. And you do, that probably blossomed into a friendship. I mean, Absolutely. you still call on, um, on, on Lynette for advice and guidance, even in your new job. Yes, I absolutely do. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that fun story. Well, we'll stick with you, Suzanne, on the, for this next question. Will you share maybe your top two or three things that you have learned from your mentor, Lynette, that have been helpful to you in your life, your career, and in other engagements that, you, that you're part of? 
I would love to. And that's really hard to narrow down because she's such an awesome lady. But first and foremost, Lynette has taught me the importance in uh, being invested not only in your career, but the community and the people around you. And I'm here to tell you, you are so much more than your nine to five job if you choose to be. And it's those connections that you build along the way that can lead to other opportunities and areas of growth. And secondly, um, Lynette, as my mentor, has taught me the importance of seeking out positive female relationships in my current career and um, other community work. So even though I've had two full-time jobs since the press, like you said, Katie, I still call on Lynette for advice all the time. I still consider her my mentor, but I have also sought out other positive female relationships in my new career. And um, it's because I know that surrounding myself with other strong women who are also passionate about their careers, um, who want to do more and be more, ignites me to do the same. That's wonderful. And it is important. And I love the story that you shared that she encouraged you to apply for a different job. You know, she didn't just hold you, even though I know she wanted to probably, but you know, it's really, it's a, that's a great uh, mentor to help, you know, kind of push you out of the nest, as you said. So that's I'm awesome. That, do that. Yeah, because a lot of people just want to keep you. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. All right, Lynette. So now we have a question for you to wrap up this portion of the of the duo. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would like to share with our audience on Facebook who have joined us on this panel discussion webinar? What's a good piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? This mentoring goes two ways. Sometimes you've got a seasoned employee mentoring a younger one, but if you open your eyes and your mind, the younger one can give back just as much as you give. And if all of us women will partner together, we can do everything. Wonderful. Sometimes you're the mentor, but you've got to give back. You support. There's so many people that need it. And it's women of all ages. Seasoned women need this support as much as the younger. And we can't be afraid of the younger women. Exactly. Do you think that there's a certain age limit on somebody being a mentor? Like, could somebody who is, um, you know, 25 or 30, could they mentor some, some younger women? What are you? Of course. I think so. Okay. And younger women can mentor and support the more seasoned women, because a lot of times when younger women come in, the seasoned women see them as a threat and they don't want to give them the credit they're due. So the younger women can show them they're there to help and do their part as well. That's important. I agree. I agree. And we're just getting some Facebook messages um, to our audience who have tuned in. Do you have any questions? You can leave those in the chat box and I'll read those out loud. We'll just wait a little bit if anybody has any questions for Lynette and, you know, maybe how they go about mentoring other women in their community or maybe y'all could, would you, one of y'all like to ask that or answer that question? I have a young mother that's a part-time employee now and I see her struggles. So we work to be flexible and help her get out to where she needs to be and she's grown wonderful and we've got we do have one question from courtney um do you all suggest having separate mentors for career and personal life oh that's a great question and hey courtney <laughs> so i i just am of the belief that you can learn something from everyone that you come in contact with. And, you know, it's through your friendships, it's through your conversations. And like Lynette said, the mentorship can go both ways, no matter your age, or if they're a part of your career or just somebody, you know, from your family or your church or somebody out in the community, you can have several different mentors for several different parts in your life. I know that I do. Um, and actually Courtney and I were the ones that recently 
coined the phrase friend tours recently because we were saying, you know what, Courtney and I are about the same age and we've learned a lot from each other because we used to work together. So Courtney, I consider you my friend tour. <laughs> That's great that we should make that a hashtag. Yeah. So if, you're, if you're watching, be sure to do hashtag friend tour and tag your friend tour today. Thank There's you. a 32 year difference in Suzanne and I but I will go to her for advice on some things. It's just a different kind of relationship, partnership. Right, thank you. It looks like we have another question in the chat box. Let's see, Megan, I have someone I consider my mentor and who I'd like to connect with more often. Advice on how to approach her about this. Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I think, you know, in my experience, some of those uh, relationships are built not just in the professional walls of your career. You know, it's okay to say like, hey, I'd really like to take you out for coffee sometime and pick your brain or just call them randomly when you think of something that you need advice on. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be so strictly work related. Right. Thank you. Let's see, we've got another question from Jordan. Um, when you meet, did you have an agenda or specific items to talk about or was it more of an open chat? I think you kind of, you might have answered that a little, Suzanne. I'm trying to think back. I'm pretty sure that Lynette vaguely knew I was popping in to say hi and um, you know, potentially interview for this job. And in my head, I'm just thinking like, oh my gosh, professional interview. So like I got all dressed up. I had a resume, you know, I was going by the book of uh, what I was taught in college to, to do these interviews. And, you know, I was pleasantly surprised when I got there that there wasn't an agenda. It was really more of a casual conversation to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Lynette, did you want to weigh in on any of that? from a mentor perspective? We didn't have a <laughs> stiff interview process. I don't like that. I'd rather people come in, get comfortable and be authentic. And that's what Suzanne was. Mm -hmm. I mean, our bond, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Our bond was pretty immediate because she was just real. She wasn't what she walked in as proper and she was just authentic so maybe when you're meeting with a mentor maybe just have that casual conversation like did you catch the latest show on netflix this weekend or you know did you watch prince harry and and megan markle's interview with oprah or something like that so i think it's best to put the proper side aside at this point and just relax and let them see what you are and what you can be. Exactly. Thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question. So Jackie has a question. What qualities and or traits do you look for when trying to find the right mentor? Oh, that's an awesome question. A great question. Okay. So, you know, I, I had never thought to myself that I had a role model growing up like a solid role model everybody always asks you and you always have to kind of make somebody up that's famous um and it wasn't until I was put in that situation trying to grow the career where I was thinking like okay what qualities would I like to have in myself I was looking for somebody who was uh confident um who could be authentically themselves who is not afraid to go up and talk to any random person. Um, and I think that those were all uh, things that I considered weaknesses within myself. And when I saw that Lynette embodied those qualities, it really drew me towards her as a mentor because I thought, hey, I can learn how to be a little more comfortable <laughs> in right. these situations from her because she just handled them with so much ease. So sometimes you don't really realize what you're looking for until you're in the middle of looking for it. And right. you know, sometimes it just falls in your lap and you're drawn to these people that have qualities that you'd like to grow within yourself. Absolutely. Thank you. Lynette, anything you'd like to tag on? I will say that 
Suzanne left the press with a stronger voice and a much thicker skin. That's right. <laughs> she probably learned. She probably learned from you, Lynette, um, since you were her mentor. Yes, one hundred percent. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you guys, um, y'all, would like to say before we switch over? Oh, we might have one more Q and A. Hold on. Oh, someone said, love this story. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank, thank you. Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you. All right. Well, we will wrap things up right here. Thank you so much, Lynette and Suzanne, for joining us. And we will bring you guys back towards the end. So stick around. And so thank you again for sharing your stories. Thank you so much. Thank for you. All right. And so now we are going to welcome our keynote speaker, Nakisha Pratt, who is the Senior Marketing Director for HarperCollins Publishers in Nashville. Nakisha has over 15 years of experience and has helped lead campaigns that have won over 20 awards. Her past positions have included leadership roles at global organizations, marketing agencies, and working for Fortune 500 companies. She has spearheaded national and international campaigns in a variety of industries, such as tourism and music. Nakisha is considered a thought leader and regularly shares her experience in marketing, strategy, leadership, and mentoring events, and in podcasts and articles. She has also given an incredible TED Talk, and we will be sharing that link in the chat box. Welcome, Nakisha. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here today, Katie. Well, Nakisha, we're excited to have you. And this panel discussion is all about women building up women on this International Women's Day, whether it's in the workplace or in our personal lives. And as we have just heard from Suzanne and Lynette, it is important that young women have a strong, more experienced mentor. We are excited to hear what you have to say with us um, on this importance of membership or mentorship, excuse me. We just had a <laughs> membership meeting. It's on my mind. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited to be here today. And um, as you mentioned, and as the panel discussions uh, prior to, to now have really highlighted the importance of mentorship. And so I'm excited to walk through really some of the things I'm going to talk about will reinforce what you just heard Suzanne and um, Lynette talk about. But for those who may be uh, less experienced um, or even more experienced and still questioning some things about mentorship, hopefully today we're going to dive into four um, overarching topics that will help cover the full spectrum. And then we'll go to a Q&A. So I'm gonna dive right in to make sure that we have the most time uh, left at the end of the session to do a Q&A. And if you have um, any questions, be sure to leave them in the chat box and in the Q&A, and then we will ask those at the end. Take it away, Nakisha. Thank you. So again, perfect topic to talk about today on International Women's Day, the importance of mentorship. So let's first talk about at what mentorship is. Um, it is a reciprocal and collaborative relationship between two professionals. Um, as mentioned earlier, that can be a senior and more junior professional, but sometimes that can be peer to peer as well. The ultimate goal is to uh, allow the mentee to grow, um, to learn and develop throughout their career. So mentors often act as role models for their mentees and they provide guidance and expertise to help the mentee reach their goals. So why is mentee or mentorship important? One of the very first things is uh, you want to avoid mistakes. So especially when you're younger um, and kind of really just starting out your career, a mentor can be someone who you, you can bounce ideas off of, uh, ask questions, ask advice so that you can make better decisions and hopefully avoid costly mistakes. A good mentor can also help their mentee learn new skills, develop greater confidence, and be better able to make long-term decisions that will impact the growth of their career. Companies and organizations can also ben benefit from mentorship. Um, when you have mentor, when you have leaders developed at every level, which mentorship does, that allows businesses to produce better, positive, um, more uh, hopefully revenue generating outcomes for their business because leaders are prepared at every level. 
mentorship um, also allows for a very diverse pipeline um, of leadership. And so when people are mentored at every level of their career, that means you have more leaders that are ready for senior leadership roles as well. So the four topics that we're going to talk about today is one, being a mentor, being a mentee. We're gonna briefly talk about reverse and peer mentorship, and then also talk about sponsors versus mentors. So first we're going to do a quick poll before we dive into being a mentor. So on your screen, you're going to see a quick question of how many mentors have you had? Now, hopefully the answer is not zero. So I didn't even put that in the chat, in the chat box. So hopefully it's somewhere between one to three, three to five or five or more. So take a few moments to submit your answer to that question. And in about 20 seconds or so, we'll close and we'll share the results with the group. Again, um, if you do have questions as we go throughout the session, please be sure to type those in so that we can answer those at the end of the, um, the discussion. I just submitted mine. So I'm excited to see how many mentors people have had. So overwhelmingly, 76% of you have had one to three mentors. So that's great. Um, some people have not had any. And so to see at least one to three mentors is really great. There's about 2% that have actually had more than five. And so that is pretty phenomenal. And then about 22% have had between um, three and five mentors. And so that's amazing to see those results. And this is a pretty um, well-mentored group, which is great. But there is always uh, always opportunity for us to talk about what is um, what it means to be a good mentee. And then we'll talk a little bit about what it means to be a good mentor. So when you're starting your mentee journey, the first thing you want to do is to establish what you want that mentor relationship to look like. What do you hope to gain from that relationship? So that could be, what do you determine would be a measure of success? So for example, if your goal is to get promoted within the next year, then understanding what your goal is will help shape the type of mentor that you are looking for. So think about where you want to be in the, ne in the next five to 10 years. So that might be a new career field. So then that means you need to find a mentor in the field that you're looking to shift to. Maybe you're looking towards retirement. Again, mentorship does not always have to be someone in their 20s. You could be your 30s, 40s, and even 50s looking for a mentor. For example, there are many women who are looking towards retirement. And one of the things they're looking to do as a part of that is to serve on paid corporate boards. So in your 40s or 50s, you might seek someone who has already served on a paid board and ask them to be your mentor so that you in the next five or 10 years can be prepared for that same opportunity. So again, does not mean it's always about getting a mentor early in your career. It could actually be later and also be just as valuable to you. You want to work in a manner that leads to success. So if you are looking for a mentor, consider do you want to send an agenda before your sessions or shoot over a couple of topics before the meeting? And this will be a conversation that you have with your mentor to determine what is um, the way that you both successfully want to work so that it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Be considerate. So mentee, our mentors are trading hours that they could be using to pursue their own career or working with someone else. So you want to be mindful of their time. So be on time, take ownership of that relationship. So maybe that is um, the mentee takes the notes, they schedule the meetings. So that way your mentor can focus on research and getting the information they need to help you be successful, not necessarily some of the more administrative tasks that comes with a mentor relationship. Um, you also want to make sure that you, before you enter into a mentor-mentee relationship, you are truly open and willing to be a vessel of knowledge, that you are open to receiving constructive criticism, you're receiving feedback, and that you're truly willing to listen to your mentor and make the suggestions that they impart upon you. 
So you've done all of the upfront work. You've decided what you want from the relationship. You have, you've started to think, okay, I'm ready to start making a list of possible mentors. What you can start doing is looking at your immediate circle for who could be a potential mentor. That could be former bosses, professors or teachers, coworkers in another department, or it could be family friends. For example, maybe your, your mother or an aunt knows a woman who runs their own business and that's your ultimate goal. And you can ask that family member to make an introduction for you to potentially have that as a mentor relationship. You can look at local organizations. So maybe chambers, rotaries, there are numerous organizations that um, have a senior level men or women who could potentially be mentors for you. You can look at formal mentoring programs that might be within your own organization. You can talk to HR to see if that's an option, or maybe HR has had enough people come to them with a desire to be mentored that they might create a formal mentoring program. But there are some times when a separate, complete, uh, completely separate organization will create a mentor program that you can actually search in your local area. And now virtually, you can do that from anywhere, really and potentially find a mentor through a formal mentoring program outside of your organization. You can also find mentors in industry groups. So that would be in the industry you're in or at uh, associations. So a lot of my mentors, um, many of them were women came through a local women's professional development organization. And so for me, not only did I learn from them while we were at our monthly meetings, but then we also had activities and I could reach out to them between meetings or really for any need that I had. You can also volunteer. So maybe you look at organizations that powerful women that you know are involved with or they're, or they're already volunteering with. So Habitat for Humanity, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Um, so Second Harvest. So look at those organizations that women are involved with, and maybe that's an opportunity for you to give back through volunteering, and then also forming relationships with women who could potentially be your mentors. Social media is another great place to look, particularly LinkedIn, um, as well as Instagram. So I would recommend you establish a real connection, um, especially if you are looking on LinkedIn and you don't already have a connection with them. I would establish a real connection with them first before asking them to be their, your mentor. Again, you wanna make sure that they're the right person for you. So maybe you follow them and you look at what content that they are sharing as well as liking and commenting and engaging with to get an idea of if that's the appropriate person you'd want to ask to be your mentor. And then trusted friends and colleagues, you can ask them for a reference. So there are numerous ways in which you can find a mentor, but these are some of the most popular ways. So getting started. So you've done some of that legwork. Now you're like, this feels like a lot. It doesn't have to be daunting or overwhelming. Once you have kind of thought through a couple of people who could potentially be your mentor, if you still feel overwhelmed, maybe you make a, a short mentoring plan where that is you write down the few goals that you hope to accomplish. You write down the three or four or five women that you plan to reach out to. You can even write the script in which you are going to say to them to uh, when you reach out to them to ask them to be your mentor, whatever makes you feel more comfortable, but it doesn't have to be this very formal process. You could really reach out to a potential mentor, ask them for a short meeting to um, ask for advice or guidance on a particular topic and see how that first meeting goes. See how you feel. Was the conversation easy? Um, are they as approachable? and easy to relate to as you would like in a mentor. And so you could always schedule one meeting, see how that goes, and then decide if you want to make the formal ask for them to be your mentor, or if you don't want it to be formal, and maybe you are just seeking the opportunity to talk to someone um, as needed or once a quarter or just whenever um, a pressing topic comes up, those are all options for you to decide. And that could be made easier if you have the first meeting and then decide how you feel about proceeding with that potential mentor.
Um, once you're ready to make the ask, just make sure that you're both uh, a good fit after you've made that ask. So just because you've asked someone to be your mentor, if after the first couple of sessions, um, you've spent time talking about what your expectation, expectations are, the mentors talked about what they expect, kind of that cadence of communication, how the mentor relationship is going to go, see how that feels and make sure that you're both a good fit for each other because you don't want to stay in a mentor mentee relationship if it's not natural it's not um, something that you both equally feel comfortable and confident in that and trust each other in so you do want to feel that uh, relationship out so before we go to the next session, in the chat, I would love for each of you to put in there if you have been only a mentor, if you've only been a mentee, or if you've done both. So you filled out the survey earlier where you mentioned how many people um, uh, you have, um, how many of you have been mentored. But I love to see if you've only been a mentee, if you've only been a mentor, or if you've been both. So type in the chat really quick, mentee, mentor, or both. And while you do that, I'm going to quickly walk you through my mentor journey. So I've had the pleasure of serving as a mentor in several occasions. Two in particular um, were at the high school level. Um, so I was a big sister in Big Brothers Big Sisters for about three years um, while my little was in high school. And then I was also a mentor for the T and Achieves um, high school program, which is where high schoolers are getting ready to transition to college and they're looking for the TN Promise um, Scholarship. And so those two opportunities were at the high school level. I've also been able to mentor business owners and founders, um, work both with the Women's uh, Pathway Women's Business Center as well as the Entrepreneur Center here in Nashville. And then I've even done some speed mentoring, if you've heard of that. Um, and that is where the um, mentee gets the opportunity to be mentored by multiple mentors. And so um, in particular, the Business Journal, the one here in Nashville, as well as business journals all across the country do an annual Mentoring Monday. Um, and so that has been an amazing opportunity where I've been able to mentor multiple people throughout the a day set aside. And then many formal and informal relationships. And then in terms of who my mentors have been, most of them fortunately have been former bosses. I've been lucky, really lucky to have female bosses that um, were just amazing in their um, willingness to learn um, what I needed, um, how to help me grow, see where my gaps were, and really to mentor me along the way. And then I mentioned earlier about the Women's um, Professional Development Organization. And then I've had um, informal relationships where I can just call, hey, I just have a quick question. This situation's popped up at work. Can I run this past you? What are your thoughts? And so it wasn't necessarily a formal, we meet once a month, but more so how do um, I leverage this relationship when um, I'm respectful that they have a lot going on and they can't do a formal relationship, but they have extended a little bit of time to me every month or quarter. And I just wanna maybe type up two or three things I wanna ask them within a you know, 15 or 30 minute phone conversation. And then peer to peer. Um, I think, you know, Suzanne mentioned um, earlier about, you know, friend, friend turning and um, peer to peer relationships are really important mentor relationships. I have one where we meet um, the third Thursday for 20 minutes and it's just a wonderful uh, opportunity where the two of us really talk about um, what it's like being a leader in our organization and we bounce ideas off of each other and we we just share wisdom and um, and it's a great relationship that I really value and it's literally 20 minutes a month but it's such a valuable experience for me. So now that I've shared a little bit about my journey let's look at the chat um, and Overwhelmingly, most people have put both, which is phenomenal. You ladies seem to, and, and gentlemen, seem to be doing a really great job of not only seeing the value of being mentored, but then also knowing the value of being a mentor. So that is amazing. Um, and it's really rare. So you should be proud of yourselves, especially those who've been fortunate to do both. So let's talk about the benefits of being a mentor. So again, I think, you know, we're, you know, everybody can say, well, I, I would love to be mentored by someone, but some might say, well, what are the values? What's the, uh, the value that I get in being a mentor? 
Well, one of them is improving your leadership listening and communication skills. So for example, I have um, someone in our organization who is looking to progress. They have managed projects, but not people. And their goal in particular is to manage people. And so one of the ways that he in particular um, wanted to be developed was they thought I'll be a mentor. And that way I can develop and hone my leadership my listening and communication skills through mentoring someone so that I can be ready to take on my first direct report. And so in that particular case, that is a great uh, way for you to actually get ready to take on uh, leadership responsibilities. There also is this personal satisfaction that comes from seeing others succeed and being a part of that. It's also a form of giving back. Uh, I like to think of it as you know, if the people who mentored me didn't make time or couldn't make time, I don't know where I would be. So it's almost for me, I feel like I'm honoring the sacrifice they made um, to mentor me by giving back and mentoring to someone else. And so you think about if you weren't mentored, what your life would look like. And that makes you feel like I need to do the same thing for someone else. So there is that personal sense of satisfaction. It also increases your network. And so you get a network of people who are either your peers that maybe you didn't have a relationship with before or that are younger who are equally as valuable as peer or senior level relationships. So you get to increase your network. You also can impact racial or gender uh, inequalities. So for example, if you are mentoring someone, we all know that mentored people do well, they get promoted, they take bigger risks and bigger chances they, because they have more confidence. And so if you are helping mentor um, someone who is say a black woman or who is um, a, just a someone who's differently abled, you are able to help um, increase or to lessen the inequalities that are experienced in the workforce because you are helping to develop future leaders. And then you get uh, access to generational or cultural perspectives that you may not have access to. And so I cannot express that enough, especially if you look at your network and they all look like you. Uh, mentoring is a great way to learn about other demographics, other generations, and other cultures, cultures that you are not aware of. So when you talk about being a mentor, what does it mean to be a good mentor? So being a good mentor is keeping your mentor's best interest at the forefront at all times. You want to make sure that you are committed to being the best mentor for them. And that means being energized, being excited, being motivated about um, helping your mentee be successful. That means designating the time that's needed to be a successful mentor. So that might be, you know, you need to dedicate a few, you know, minutes, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, preparing before your session with your mentee to make sure that you've researched and you're prepared to answer anything that might come up, or it may be following up in between sessions with your mentee to make sure they're doing well and they're progressing on their goals. And so you want to make sure that you are committing the time needed for that relationship to be successful. You want to be discreet and respect confidentiality. You want to tailor that mentor that mentor relationship to be um, to meet the needs of that mentee. So, again, every mentee's needs are going to be different, and so you want to tailor that relationship so that it's successful. And then you want to give constructive feedback and you want to hold your mentee accountable. Now, I'm not saying call their boss when they're not <laughs> fulfilling their, their duties in your mentor-mentee relationship, but it could be as simple as asking your mentee to take notes from your mentor session and sending those to you so that you have kind of a checklist, a document that the next time you meet again, you can ask your mentee about so that they are accountable. So it doesn't have to be this formal, um, very strict process, but helping a mentee be accountable for their success is something that a good mentor does. Now, here are a few tips that I wanted to share, and this is very similar to what um, Suzanne and Lynette mentioned, is that mentorship does not have to always be formal. And, you know, your first one or two one or two sessions could really be just to get to know each other. You may not have established a reoccurring cadence. It may, you may not have said, 
I want to meet once a month, you know, uh, the, the second Monday from 9 to 10 a.m. It could be that formal and there's nothing wrong with that, but it could be more um, I'm going to reach out, you know, for, you know, one session um, every month. And it's flexible depending on what works for the, the schedule for the both of you, or might be every quarter. It could be where there are um, just times where you email um, suggestions or ideas. And so your first couple of sessions can be just getting to know each other, and they may not be structured in the beginning. What you should structure is your sessions that you do have for success. And so you want to establish three or four goals for your relationship. And again, when we talked about what it's like to be a mentee, we talked about knowing what your objectives are from the mentee relationship. And so if you haven't shared those with your mentor, now is the time to do that in your first few sessions. That allows you to focus your sessions and it also allows for accountability because you've said, here are the three or four goals that I want to focus on. And so each session you can check on those and your mentor can hold you accountable for your progress. You also want to talk through a commitment time frame. I know that some people feel uncomfortable with um, um, asking someone and then definitely feel uncomfortable with saying, can we do it for six months? So you don't necessarily have to set that commitment time frame up front, but it is something that along your conversation with your mentor, you should actually discuss so that there is a conclusion. It's also another way to be um, accountable as a mentee that you've said, Six months from now, I want to be able to do X, Y, Z. And that might be the time frame in which your mentor-mentee relationship um, is established for. Does not mean you can't continue to communicate, but you do want to formalize what that end date is so that you do have something to focus towards. And a small gesture of thanks for your mentor is not required, but it should be something that you should consider if at all possible. And that does not have to be monetary. Um, a small gesture of thanks might be, maybe you see an award that you think your mentor fits perfectly for and you nominate them. That could be your gesture of thanks and you shoot them an email and make sure they're okay with you nominating them and, um, the, and that they know that you are nominating them. Or it could be, maybe you get that promotion and you're interviewed by the local paper um, and you're talking about that promotion and how excited you are. Maybe you, you know, mention your mentor and the role that they played in your advancement towards that position. And so think about what small gesture you might be able to do to show thanks if that is something you can do and it does not have to be something monetary. So we have two quick topics that will round out our mentoring discussion and then we'll get to question and answers. One of those topics um, is reverse and peer mentorship. And so this was mentioned earlier, just to kind of put a formal name that reverse mentorship actually is a really important form of mentorship. This is where um, a younger employee is paired with a more senior or executive team member. And the goal is for that younger employee to talk about strategic or culturally relevant things that the more senior executive may not know about. Emerging trends, things that are very specific to a certain generation. And so there is real value in reverse mentorship. The other is peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. And so I mentioned this a few minutes ago when I said we ha I have a meeting, you know, the third Thursday for 20 minutes with a peer. And it's just such a powerful form of, of mentorship that I think most people don't often think about. And this is a section that I could have a whole separate presentation on, uh, but I'll try to, to summarize it in this slide, which is the difference between mentors and sponsors. And mentors may or may not work in your organization. As we've talked about, they guide and give you career advice, and they help connect you to others in their network. A sponsor typically works at your organization they are advocates and they speak up for you. They mention your name in rooms that you're not in. They provide visibility and opportunity. So they bring you into rooms that you that may have been closed off to you before. They give you, you know, the proverbial seat at the table. And so there is a difference between sponsors and mentors. An important thing to mention is that there are many people who are over mentored or who have access to a lot of mentors. 
but they don't have access to sponsors. And that can be a particular issue. For example, if you're at a large organization, a uh, national or global um, organization, and you don't want to leave, but you're at a level to where that in order to grow, you need a sponsor, not a mentor, because the guiding and the career advice you have, but you need someone who is going to speak your name when there's a discussion about a job opening um, before it's posted online, or who's going to say, hey, we need to invite Nikisha into this conversation to give you visibility to senior leadership that you didn't have. And so there are times where a sponsor is so much more valuable than a mentor. And so I just wanted to briefly mention that. Again, we could talk about that all day, but there is a difference between the two roles. So, we have talked a lot about mentorship today. Uh, we had some really great insight directly from Susan M. and Lynette, and which was just amazing. And so we all know that people who are well mentored get promoted. They take bigger risk and bigger chances because they feel confident and motivated to go after bigger goals. Mentors have the privilege, it is truly a privilege of impacting the future and shaping future generations for the better. And so mentorship can be mutually beneficial and it should be something that we explore at all levels. So hopefully today we've talked about every facet of mentorship and it's something that you are considering being a mentored as well as being a mentor. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Nakisha. That was incredible. If we were in person, we would all be clapping like this. <laughs> um, so let's hop into the Q&A question. This question is just awesome. So a reminder, if you have any questions, um, please leave them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, this one is from Mickey Davis. And this person has said, what's one of the most powerful things you remember from someone who mentored you? <laughs> to bet on myself. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of times, especially, you know, we hear all this imposter syndrome and, and it's, and I hate that term and how I feel like it's overused. Sometimes we haven't been mentored to be confident um, or someone has taught us to be humble and, and not really to talk about the things that we've done and be successful. And one of my really early mentors, she was my um, second professional boss, my first female boss, but my second boss in a professional setting. And she said, you need to be in mentor and leadership development programs. Um, she said, I see this in you and you work so hard and you keep your head down and you don't say anything. And um, and she wasn't one to steal the spotlight. She wasn't one to take credit for my work, but she's like, you're such a hard worker. You deserve recognition for that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that had never been said to me before. And so it was very much about being confident in who you are, being confident in your skill set, and don't listen to people who say you should be um, seen and not heard. And so that has stuck with me. And um, it's taken me a while to get to that, that level of confidence, um, but, but I wouldn't have it if it weren't for her. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. We've got another question. Let's see, Angela Jackson Brown has a question. Um, <laughs> is there any advice that you didn't take from a mentor that you wish you had? Yes. <laughs> um, I, um, in my early twenties, I have a, a really um, unconventional career choice. And the fact that I was married and had a family in my early 20s. Um, and so, and I was going to school. I received my bachelor's degree when my son was three. And I had been married for probably eight years by that time. And so I was juggling a lot, being a wife, um, being a very young mom and going to school and trying to succeed at work. And my boss told me about the mentoring program. She said, you need to join 
a women's development organization. You need to be around other women. And I just felt I was too busy. I was focused on trying to get promoted. And I just felt like I didn't have time. And it wasn't until I was in my early 30s and I was just kicking myself like, and I was just, I was seeing all of the work that I really want, I should have started in my 20s doing, and I would have known that had I been in the, in the leadership development uh, organizations that my boss had recommended. It, but it goes back to betting on yourself. And so um, I don't regret any decisions that I've made, but I do often wonder like, what if I had started in my, my late 20s versus my early 30s? So I would say that is the advice that I kick myself uh, for, but I would not change where I am today because all things work for the good of the universe, so. Thank you. Casey has a question. She says, Nikisha, great job. Thank you. What, what is the greatest advice you can give working women? Don't live by other people's uh, standards and expectations. Um, I think that we try to be perfect and we try to make sure that our house is always cleaned and our children are so well behaved and we have this picture perfect image with our you know significant others and work and i think that um i learned a long time ago that you have to stop caring about um what other people think your life should look like um and so you know for me House is not going to get cleaned until Saturday morning. So if you come over on a Wednesday uh, <laughs> so, or a Thursday, um, the closer to Saturday you get, it's going to be rough. But I have just learned that, you know, it, that was that's what works for our, our household. Um, and so I would say there is no definition other than your definition of what your time frame should look like in terms of getting promoted or not being promoted. Or if you decide I want to focus on my family for the next two or three years and I'll come back to developing um, and focusing on my career growth. I think you have to define what success looks like for you and not let anybody tell you if that's right or wrong. Awesome. Thank you. We've got some uh, audience members agreeing with you. <laughs> yes, lots of exclamation points. Um, we have another question in the chat. Uh, Jill says, thank you, Nakisha. She said, some industries, companies, organizations focus on competitiveness. Mm -hmm. What some advice you would give on speaking up to encourage mentorship, to celebrate successes and building each other up? I think that especially in if you're in a work environment that does not encourage or does not celebrate successes. I think if you start to do that yourself, I think slowly but surely people are like, oh, Jill called out Nikisha today in a meeting for something really great she did. Okay. Oh, wait, this is the third week in a row. Jill called out another coworker who did something awesome. Hmm. I think that um, there are ways, or maybe you go to the dollar store and buy, you know, blank cards and you start leaving cards on people's desks. You can, and then at some point, leadership will start taking notice and then may feel like, oh, wait a minute, Jill might be on to something. We might need to catch up. And so I think you can start with yourself first and hopefully your leadership will catch on and realize okay, people are really enjoying this. People are really smiling and laughing and, and really excited when they hear that, that recognition come from, you know, Jill, for example, and, and maybe we should really start to do something around that. And so I think you can start where you can, uh, and hopefully that'll catch on like wildfire. Wonderful. We've got another wonderful keynote address. This has been a great lunch. Thank you. And then we've got probably time for one or two more questions. So will uh, he says, thank you, Nakisha, Katie, and all panelists. For the men in the discussion, what advice would you have for us to be better allies and make sure women's voices are uplifted in the workplace? Great question. This is a great question. And I have had men um, who, like Will, have recognized the importance of being an ally. And um, in many cases, um, you know, 
what Will brings up is really important for men and women alike to be mindful of. Looking when you're in a meeting, is there someone who's significantly um, devalued in that meeting? Meaning they're talked over, they're, people don't ask their opinion. They are, every time they do express an opinion, it's kind of dismissed your role can be to counteract that. So maybe if they're cut off, you come back and ask them, hey, hey, Nikisha, were, were you saying something earlier? And I, I'd like to know what you, what you were saying. Or maybe you co-sign, you reinforce what they were saying. Hey, I, I, heard, I heard Jill say that earlier. Um, I'd like to bring that, that subject back up. Can we talk about that? And so, small things can actually make a really big impact and it could be really looking for opportunities where you can uplift um, marginalized voices and how do you bring them back around um, to where that people um, resume their focus where it should be. Great, that is so helpful. And I believe that we are about time to wrap things up. So if you want to um, stop sharing your screen, yes. and we'll bring Lynette and Suzanne back on the screen so that we can wrap up everything. Everyone saying thank you. That's wonderful. And we enjoyed it. And we'll get Lynette back on the screen. And then we will do a little thank you. Everyone's saying thank you. Great job. Great job, everyone. Thank y'all so much. So thank you, Nakisha, for that incredible keynote uh, message. Suzanne and Lynette, thank you for sharing your stories and words of wisdom. And thank you to all of our attendees today. We hope that you have been encouraged to seek out a mentor or begin mentoring someone in your life. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you.